Thank you so much, and I want to give you the biggest welcome to the most beautiful island in the country, Sullivan's Island, and we are so blessed to be here, and I can't tell you how honored I am that all of you have come to be with me today. My first job is to thank our outgoing president, Angus McCauley, and where did he go? Come on back up, Angus. Um, Angus has spent the last year providing leadership to our Bar Association, and he has spent a lot of time away from his family. And I know the one thing that he loves more than anything is, is Lake Murray. The Bar, when trying to decide what to give him as a gift, decided that they would give him a remembrance for him to have always when he can't be out on the, the island and chasing the sunset. And they, we picked out a framed print We actually got him a picture, but he had, there's a framed print waiting for him in Columbia, but the picture of it is in there. Thank you so much, Amy. Before discussing my plans for the year, I've got some lengthy thank yous, and so I apologize up front for those. I want to thank my wonderful family that is so supportive of me, my husband Kit, my daughter Margaret Ann, my son Chris, my sister Margaret, her husband Wayne, my mother Margaret Taylor who has been the most wonderful and supportive mother, my brother John and his wife Tony, and I also want to thank my very good friend Margaret Seymour who, is, who has come here today. And you might see that there are a lot of Margaret's, I think I'm attracted to. But anyway, I want to give my heartfelt thanks to all of them. I also want to thank the bar leadership, the bar staff, and I want to say thank you that Bob is well and doing great. I want to send out a big thank you to my female predecessors in this office, and my wonderful friend Elaine, my friends Elaine, Betsy, and Flo Vincent, they have given me so much guidance, and uh, I can't wait to uh, get more from them. I also want to thank the biggest trailblazer of all, and that's our Chief Justice, Jean Toll. She always says, put the ladder down, and pull it up, and keep keep helping people out, and that is something that is so important in this day and time when we have so many new admittees who are coming in, who don't necessarily have a mentor and a skill. Um, going forward over the next few years, I've actually uh, been talking to the two, my two wonderful successors who are coming behind me. Cal Watson and Ann Ellison, and we've put together a three-year, there's going to be a four-year plan when Leah Moody joins with us so that we can start things and make sure that they get accomplished because we have enough time going forward to get things done. So along those lines, one of the big things that uh, we are pushing is diversity. And by diversity, I mean inclusion. And inclusion means having programs and having resources for everyone and making sure that every member of our bar feels like our bar is providing services <coughs> to him or her. We don't want to look at race, gender, national origin, religion. We want the whole person. We want the person who lives in a rural area, who works with a small firm, and the person who works with mid-sized and big-sized firms. Everybody should be included. And we've created a diversity task force, which is being chaired by my good friend, David Whittington. And he is taking this leap to try to come up with some ideas. And we'll be looking at um, trying to reach out to young people to make sure that they understand the importance of diversity in the legal profession and make sure that those people are coming up and having diverse backgrounds so that when they do get out, they can provide services to all of the clients who come from every walk in life. Um, the second task force 
that we have set up the Board of Governors to take forward and make recommendations is a uh, law school task force. And Ward Bradley is, ch is chairing that. When um, Carl and Marvin and Angus spent the last three years meeting with <coughs> all of the county bars, what came resounding back from the members of every bar was the new, law, the new lawyers coming out are not finding the traditional jobs that they've always been able to find. And then they're going out and hanging out shingles and they really don't know everything they need to know to practice law because running a law firm is a business. So Ward is gonna, he's got a task force set up and they're gonna look into recommendations that can be made to the law schools and to the bar to come up with some programs to make new lawyers feel more confident and more comfortable in going forward with this wonderful profession that we are in. Then we have two task force that are dealing with transitions and Nancy Lehman is chairing the Retiring <coughs> Lawyers Task Force. And she's looking at this from another perspective rather than the new lawyers. She's looking at the baby boomers, we baby boomers, because I know how old I am also, who are, who are aging out and maybe looking at retirement and trying to deal with those things that unfortunately happen to us as we age. So she's gonna have a task force going forward that the senior division is sponsoring and any of you who have ideas or recommendations for any of these, please contact the chairpersons or contact me. The fourth task force that we have re recently set up is being chaired by Catherine DeAngelo. And it's basically a transition task force. And this is really to address pretty much any transition that a lawyer might have. That can be either lawyers coming into the profession, it could be a lawyer who's going from a public, working for a governmental entity into private practice. It can be a woman who's coming back after years of raising children, coming back into the practice. Uh, it can be lawyers transitioning out. So she started and has already been going gangbusters with uh, her committee and coming up hopefully in January I'll have all of these great recommendations to present to you and to let you know where we are. And these are the things we're starting with and we're hoping to move forward and the one thing I want to tell each of you is that if any of you have a concern or you have an idea or you have a recommendation that you think needs to be developed or looked at, I am open, I have an open door. Also, I volunteer Bob Wells <laughs> and, uh, and the other officers and Board of Governor members. Everyone here wants to make our mandatory bar relevant. We wanna make it user friendly. We wanna make sure that everyone feels like the bar is serving the legal profession, the clients, and the judiciary. Let me close with uh, something that is very near and dear to my heart as a lawyer, and that is the importance of civility and collegiality among our profession. And it's one thing that I'm very proud of because I go to, I go to court with clients and they, are, they get so upset about something that happens and I leave and I'm still friendly with my colleague who was on the other side of the aisle. And that's something that is so important and so necessary because in the long run, you certainly get more when you have a friendly attitude with your adversaries. It just makes for a much better experience and even the clients notice it and comment on how nice it is to see that our legal profession stays friendly and we stay together and nothing rattles us and we don't get perturbed. So I want to congratulate all of you because I know that 
that that's the one thing that we really strive for and I'm so proud of. We must never forget that we provide services to <coughs> our clients and they are entitled to quality services in a civil atmosphere. And I want to thank you right now for giving me the opportunity to serve you during the next year and I am really looking forward to it and I am serious. If you think of anything that I can do to help you, let me know. Thank you very much.